everyone. Um, we're here today to show how to do a reflow on a MacBook Pro pre unibody. Um, this has a faulty logic board. Uh, very common problem with these MacBook Pros. I'm going to show you the symptoms and then we're going to do a test to make sure that it's not another, another cause and if it isn't then we're going to go ahead and do the repair. Um, so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn on the MacBook Pro. Uh, very common you'll see standby light come on you won't hear the boot chime nothing else will happen nothing will come up on the screen you will get the charging light when you plug it in and the light will stay on to me this is an indication of two possible problems um, the first could be that one of the uh, RAM chips has gone bad one of the RAM channels may not be connected to the north bridge um, and in that case it would be a reflow of the north bridge um, or the graphics processor or the video RAM for the graphics processor has become unseated so as you can see nothing happened so I'm going to go ahead and turn it off I'm going to go ahead and turn it off <laughs> okay um, you'll still have this issue um, if you get the boot chime and nothing else, then most likely it's not going to be the RAM. So in order to test the RAM, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come over. There's three screws that hold this down. Very small. Comes right out. And then we're going to remove the RAM cover. And there's your RAM. So I don't want to test each individual one right, right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just take out both RAM sticks. This is the, of course, easiest way to determine whether this logic board has that issue. I'm not going to bother plugging it back into the outlet either. We know that it charges and that there's no shorts in the charging circuit. I am going to just reinsert the battery. Then we're going to, get to turn it over and we're going to see what happens when I turn it on without any RAM in it. If it's working properly, then we should hear loud beeps. Um, let's go ahead and see what happens. So we have the light, nothing on the screen, no loud beeps, no noise. So at this point, I'm going to rule out any RAM issues. I'm going to go ahead and decide that this is a logic board failure. Um, most likely the North Bridge or the GPU or the VRAM. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this MacBook Pro and then I'm going to reflow those chips and we're going to see what happens when I'm done. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. And now we're going to go ahead and disassemble. So we're going to need a small Phillips and I'm going to go and get my forks. And we're going to need a T10. And we're also going to need smaller T. So when you want to disassemble it, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to remove the RAM cover. You take out the RAM modules, then you have two Torx screws right here. You're going to go ahead and remove those. Torx screws are loose, then we're going to go ahead and start taking out the screws from the bottom that hold it in place. One, two, there should be a third one here, it's not there, that's fine, sometimes they break and fall out, sometimes someone else has been to these MacBook Pros before I have, 
but it's not a worry. Um, you just go ahead and make sure you put all the screws back in that came out of it, so that way the client is happy. And if there are any missing screws and you don't have them to replace, just inform them that they're not there. Now there are screws all around the edge. These are all Phillips. I'm just going to go ahead and take them out. Now, it's not really difficult to remove these screws, but there may be a couple of screws that you won't be aware of that could be hidden. Um, when you try to take the top off, it will seem to come off from the back, but then the front will be stuck, and you can end up bending the aluminum housing. You can also ruin the top cover. So I'm going to show you where these screws are in a minute, once I get these other ones out of the sides. And these are very important screws to remove, and also very important to put back in because if you don't put them back in the whole front piece will pop up every time you put the lid down and it's not fun for you and it's definitely not going to be fun for you when the client shows up to pick it up Okay, so now all the screws are out of the top. We also have this one Torx, which is being difficult. Okay, so now, where are you going to worry about where these two screws are that I was talking about? It's going to be inside the battery housing case. And you're going to have these two screws right here. Very important that you take them off before you try to, try to take the top off where the keyboard is. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to remove that so I have a smaller screwdriver. And then I'm going to just go ahead and very easily, very carefully, not to strip screws. One. And although this one is in, it is not actually in anything. So I'm going to try to use a magnet to get it out. Here we go. So now I'm just going to release, open it, and then we're going to grab from the back forward you can see what it's still holding that has been released so make sure the keyboard ribbon cable is off and we're going to get that out okay all right so his keyboard touchpad and here's the data cable. Connects right there. Okay, so now we have the inside. Um, a couple of things we're going to do. We're going to remove this and then I'm going to check the fans and clean them if they need to be cleaned. I'm going to reseed these chips. Also the north bridge and the graphics processor and then we're going to reassemble it. Be very careful when you lift up all of these little connectors. You have different ones for different things, LCDs. All this doesn't have to come out. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, 
this one, this one, this one, and all of these screws. This one needs to come off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Most of these will be the torques on the, on the motherboard. There are, I believe, two that are going to be Phillips. Um, what we're doing now is just removing. We're going to go ahead and there's little releases on either side. And make sure that you release those properly. We're going to pull that back. Now this particular Torx is also used to hold this wire in place. I have a pretty good memory of where all the screws go, um, but if you don't, feel free to set those up however you see fit. The only things that I do like to keep together is the screws for each individual fan. And as you can see, this particular black screw right here on the fan is going to be a Phillips. So I have my three screws and now my fan is going to come right out. We're going to check it. One thing we're going to do is we're going to spin it and I don't know if you can see that very well on the camera but it springs back. That means that the fan is still good and it is not dirty. So now I'm going to move on to the next fan. Just going to release that and I'm going to remove the Torx. And that one's going to come out. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to test the fan. That one is not as good. <laughs> it looks like... Oh, there we go. I'm going to blow it out real quick just to test. Okay. It has a little spring. It's on its way out. Um, I'm going to do this repair. And I will inform the client that uh, they are going to want to replace this soon. It's not, right, it's not completely dead yet, but it's going to be my recommendation to replace it, but it's all what's within their budget. The LCD ribbon cable also has a Torx screw. I'm going to remove that, and that's fine. Now I'm going to start to remove the rest of the Torx for the motherboard. We have the outside edges. We also have one more Phillips. It's going to be right here next to the DVD drive near the RAM channel. And I believe this one may be... Nope, that's Torx. We're going to remove this one. And you'll know it goes back there because it has the blue washer around it. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and remove this. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, no. Okay, these are supposed to be screws here. They're also not there. It's not going to affect the functionality. And I'm going to disconnect the CMOS battery. And now we're going to go ahead and start removing the these two wires, which is the hard drive cable and the left I.O. board cable. I'm going to make sure that you're very careful with this because if you disconnect these wires from the battery connector you will be doing some micro soldering and you need to have your skills up for that and if these wires aren't there it may not detect the battery it may not charge the battery it will give incorrect values so it's really really important not to remove this and to be very careful when you disconnect that okay so now I'm gonna remove the screws for the motherboard that actually attach it to the heatsink. Mm.